Excuse me, sir. What, what, what are these signs for? I'm sorry. What are these signs for? Forcing it beginning on Monday. Beginning on Monday? And yeah. what is it exactly you guys are going to be basically. We're going to be looking at the, the basically any violations of the ordinance and towing the system. So, what would be the violations? The, the violations? Like. Expired registration, people living in it on the streets, um, basically. So, like, if you guys were to find something like all of these people that are living in the if streets? They, if they were all. Yeah, if they were, if they were in violation, then we would be towing the vehicle. So even if it's registered and all that, like you well, guys are if it's not if it's not registered, that's one thing. We're gonna be basically focusing on uh not like what's mainly you guys priority. But do you know the state knows about this? I you know what then? I know it's very they interesting. Know about they just work for the city money don't Yeah, but I wanna know yeah, but I wanna know if the state knows this. I, I, again, you'd have to talk to West city, city council or whoever. You have to go to a city council meeting and talk to them over there. Yeah, we had, we had just went there um, Tuesday, okay. and um, they said that they're going to go ahead and make an evaluation. So they're going to go ahead and define what they're going to end up doing. Okay. I own a big house because I inherited this because I was stuck in a handicap, and now they send me a letter. And if you don't pay the sixty-two thousand dollars, I might become one of these people. Wow. So this is that, and this is the letter of the Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I really appreciate you, it. I might become one of these pretty soon. Uh -huh. Wow. Can you see the letter in there? Uh -huh. right. My house is worth half a million dollars. And it's because I don't have $62,000, if I don't pay because I have a, such a hard time, uh -huh. hardship. Went through divorce and dead people. And if I don't pay this money, in the future I might become not having a motor home, nice like this man. I may end up in the street in Chinatown. And I have a hard time working in this country. I've been working very hard to to earn this, and now I'm, I might I might be in the trash over there. Not necessarily in the trash. That's what I try to speak. I already went to speak with Simon Salinas. I try to speak right now with Luis Alejo. They are so so busy that they, they don't have a time like this. You know, probably they used to have a house too like me. And now if I don't pay sixty-two three or sixty-three thousand dollars, I'm gonna lose my house for half a million dollars. Okay. I live in Gonzales already. Yeah. But I'm already eating in Chinatown now. Uh, Wes White, W-E-S and W-H-I-T-E. Awesome. And uh, your position, your title? Um, the president of the Salinas Homeless Union. Awesome. Okay. So, tell me a little bit about your state. It's an issue, obviously. Um, law is going to Vehicles are going to be moved here in as little as 24 hours. Um, um, I'm kind of scared, actually, because uh, this is a form of affordable housing. We are the county seat. Uh, this is where services are available and yet unattainable. Uh, everybody gets in a line, and maybe in 10 years or so, they might, uh, you know, be selected as an applicant and, you know, called back. But most people, they get in a line, and they never, they never get any, any movement forward after that. So, so we're stuck in this conundrum of, uh, you know, these cars are too are ugly for this town, so you're not welcome here. We don't serve your town. And, I mean, it's, it's an attack on poor people. It's, it's money, isn't it? Okay. Um, so, what do you most fear for, feel fearful for um, these people whose vehicles are going to be moved here at their homes, essentially? What, what do you most fear for? Quite honestly, the, a, a lot of these homes, you know, the, why they're staying still is because it's expensive to move it. If you have to travel in this thing, it only gets like maybe eight miles a gallon. Um, you're talking some serious money just just to move. And all of these services, amenities, you know, um, access to society and life and tools and resources and bathrooms and everything we need is already within city limits. We're the county seat. A, a few people. 
they can't leave the county because this is where, you know, they, they're already receiving services. And if they go to another county, then they have to go to the back of the line. And, and this is already the county seat. If they go out of here, they're already not welcome to the county. So they're certainly not going to be welcome to the valley. So where are we going to end up? They, they're just supposed to fall off the face of the earth. And that's not a fair position to have. These are people. Why do you think it has been so convenient for Um, the city understands this problem very well, okay? Uh, it started in the peninsula, they started uh, blocking people from having RVs in those towns, and because of that, the pressure and, and growth swelled, all right? And, and they ended up on Lapis Road, we started intervening over there, we were able to get a safe parking program because at least the county understood they needed to take more responsibility, and the city has advocated their responsibility entirely although the county is very, very much in support of this happening, even though these are, these are also their clients, customers, consumers, whatever you want to call them. Right. But not people, I'm sure. Um, Ellen, what's something, that you would, uh, what's something that you would suggest as an alternative, something that the city could do, you know, to address the complaints of citizens who live in homes, but also live in, I should say, in stationary homes? Um, who, you know, don't want to have RVs parked on their streets, but also, you know, to give people who live in RVs, what would you say is a, is a good alternative? Um, I think we can work with people a lot better than, than right now. We're, right now, we're just straight out rejecting people. We're not trying to work with people. We've never tried to connect these people with services, which uh, has been a mandate in the past uh, for their um, uh, 2016 ordinance. They said they would connect people with services, and they did not. Uh, so as they were clearing out people, they would post, but nobody would sign them up for HMIS, the, the uh, Housing Management Information Services uh, database. No, nobody would, um, you know, actually try to do any kind of data collection at all. So are we really, I mean, are we practicing what we preach? Are, are we following through with our own law? I mean, you know, are we even trying it? Or are we just saying one thing to appease people and make it think that it's a logical explanation and then turn around and say, oh, well, see, they didn't want it. You know, that's, that's, not, a, that's not a fair way to go. Do you think something like a safe parking program would work in this case? I don't see why not. I mean, it's, it's needed. It's really easy. Honestly, most people here can govern themselves well. And, and if we were to micromanage some, some very minimal uh, rule set, you know, whatever you want to do with the trash, well then, if we had a collection. I mean, you got to also understand that a lot of people make dump runs and give them to people rather than pay the dump, you know, and then it still becomes the issue. Um, with the, this, um, uh, this ordinance, what would you Well, quite honestly, I've, I've, uh, I've, tried to, I've tried to encourage them to come to City Council and tug at the heart of the community. I'm pretty sure that the Council, City Corporate, has already made a firm decision and since they're committed, they're not going to turn. But it, it was, you know, trying to, trying to tug at the community. And uh, that kind of fell through, all right? They, they gave it an extra month, uh, I guess, to, to, to push some kind of due process. But two weeks, two months, two years, if you've got nowhere to go, you got nowhere to go. And that's, that's the whole thing. If we're blocking uh, you know, progress from happening, and we're not actually saying what we need, um, you know, and yet we're still even in, in dire situation, almost you know, treading water. So I've been trying to get them to go, and then I, I set up a, um, a Know Your Rights uh, uh, seminar with some, some friends of mine. And uh, just kind of let them know that, that they, they should video every, every police encounter. They need to uh, you know, document as much as possible because this is theft. This is, this is legalized theft of poor people. It's, it, this is affordable housing already. Uh, but, but we've made an ordinance and said you can't do something that's legal in the rest of the state of California because we don't want you here. And there, there really is no, I mean, this arbitrary number thing, oh, it just happens to fit and coincide with the RVs. So, I mean, everybody now, they have to flee for their life. I've given them a couple of numbers for uh, a, a volunteer, a new volunteer parks, Monterey County has. 
uh, the safe parking program in Marina, and uh, you know, a, a couple of churches that might take a couple of vehicles. But for the mass part of it, where are they going to go? Well, they might end up in a shopping center. But you get you know, a couple of days of that, and uh, and the police just come by and say, hey, guess what? You better get those guys out of there, or we'll charge a thousand dollars a day per vehicle per day. And so the manager says, well, not on my property. And uh, that's the it's, it's been systematic. It's very systematic, and, and, and it's open discrimination against poor people. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, we could do a lot better. We could do a lot better. We, we're not even trying at this point. We're actually going in the opposite direction. And that, that, that hurts a lot because we're destroying people's lives. Their livelihood, their ability to, to improve their situation. We talk about affordable housing, how much we care. And, and it's just words. We need to see action and we're not seeing that. You know, we, we need to, we, this community's got a lot of heart and actually that's what I wish is the community would come out and, and stop this. But how can you do that when you, you hardly connect with the people you know. You're not going to connect with strangers. You're not going to want to come and talk to these people because we've already got these dirty talk stereotypes of, you know, they're all criminals, they're all litter addicts, they're all drug addicts, they're all mental illness. Those are all boxes that we're trying to keep people in a glass ceiling and, and there's no way they're ever supposed to escape. You know, once we put you there, We've rejected you from society. You're never supposed to come back. You're unestablished. You're never going to get reestablished. And that's what we want. We want some kind of Hunger Games dystopia. It's, it's tragic. And, and, and why? Because paper is more important than people. And that's wrong.